This video discusses surgery for a variety of epiretinal membranes. In this case of an idiopathic membrane, vitrectomy is being done. Once vitreous is cleared, triamcinolone is injected to facilitate PVD induction. The residual triamcinolone is removed and hyaloid is detached from the retina. After this, a fine forceps is used to peel the epiretinal membrane from the surface of the retina in a circumferential manner so as not to exert any traction. After this, brilliant blue was injected and with the help of that staining, we remove the ILM. After that, air fluid exchange is done to finish the case. Next case is an ERM after prophylactic laser in a high myopic patient. Here you can see the laser done in the periphery and it was followed with formation of a epiretinal membrane. Once again, the same maneuvers were done. The ERM is being peeled. And after that, brilliant blue is injected to help facilitate peeling of ILM air fluid exchange is carried out. Next case is an epiretinal membrane following a toxoplasma scar. You can see a thick membrane which has formed due to the scar of previous toxo infection. Vitrectomy is carried out followed with triamcinolone injection. Residual crystals are absorbed and then forceps is used to start peeling the membrane. The macula starts to relax as soon as the membrane is peeled and you can see a thick whitish membrane in the area of the scar inferiorly. This is followed with brilliant blue injection to remove the ILM from this area. ILM removal is done so as to reduce the chance of recurrence of membrane formation in this area. Once again, an air fluid exchange is done. This is the one month post-operative picture of the patient. Next is a case of myopic silicon filled eye which has developed a peritoneal membrane. Silicon oil has been removed and this is a membrane which had formed in the retro silicon plane which is gradually being removed. Myopic retinas are very thin and one has to be very careful while gradually removing the membranes. Next is a case of taut epiretinal membrane in a case of silicon filled eye. Once again, oil is removed and then the retro silicon membrane is, is gradually peeled off. You can see in this case that there is an inferior detachment coexisting with the membrane. And so the membrane is removed first and after that, retina is put back, followed with endo laser and fluid air exchange. Another case of uh, ERM removal under the silicon oil. In this case, we are not removing the oil. The membrane is being removed under the oil. You can see the reflex of the membrane under oil, which is peeled off from the underlying retina. This was the post-operative day one picture of this case. Next is an ERM removal under silicon oil and also under PFCL which is injected in the retro silicon plane. There is a space uh, between the oil and the retina which is redundant and so to help get a nice uh, grip over the membrane we inject PFCL in that plane and after that remove the membrane. This helps keep the retina taut and flatten well under PFCL.
Next is a thick ERM removal under PFCL. As you can see, this is a thick scar radiating in different directions. And PFCL is injected to keep the retina stabilized while we can peel off the membrane. The PFCL here acts as a third hand and is a very useful accessory to such maneuvers. And then gradually remove the membrane from all directions. The whole membrane comes off. After that, PFCL is removed. Thank you very much.